Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. In this video, we're going to look at some deep sky objects suitable for a Dobsonian telescope. I'm making this video at the request of one of the viewers, Venom Bai, who asked me to make a video about deep sky objects and galaxies suitable for a Dobsonian. Venom specifically mentioned the Whirlpool Galaxy M51, the Andromeda Galaxy M31, and the Great Orion Nebula M42. But since all three of those are visible in different seasons, I'll divide this into a four-part series based on the seasons. This will be part one, Deep Sky Objects Suitable for a Dobsonian, part one, summer. Of the objects mentioned, Orion will have to wait until winter. M51 is well past the prime time to view it. But if I'm out here late enough, the Andromeda galaxy should rise and we can look at M31. In all, I've chosen 10 objects that are highly suitable for a Dobsonian telescope. My Dobsonian has a 10 inch aperture, but if you have an eight inch, a six inch, or even a four and a half inch aperture Dobsonian, you should be able to see all of the items I've selected for us to look at. I'll tell you about each object and then I'll show you how to find them. And then I'll show you how they look to me in my Dobsonian with sketches and maybe simulations. We will be looking at the following constellations, Ophiuchus, Sagittarius, Cygnus, and Volpecula. I'm going to be using Sky and Telescope's Pocket Sky Atlas Jumbo Edition for locating each object, and it helps to take your telescope to a dark sky site, but if you just set it up in your backyard, in a suburban area, or even a light polluted area, then try using a UHC filter to help. And don't forget to let your telescope cool down and let your eyes become dark adapted. I would say 30 minutes minimum for both you and the telescope. So when it gets dark, I'll come back and we'll get started. Well, when it gets darker, it's not dark enough right now. We'll start in Ophiuchus. We'll start with M10, a beautiful globular cluster. It was discovered in 1764 by Charles Messier. It's about 11.3 billion years old and it's thought to contain over a hundred thousand stars. It's about 19 arc minutes across and it's apparent magnitude 6.6. .6. To find it, start at Antares, the bright red star in the heart of Scorpius and go up from there to the bottom four stars of Ophiuchus. The two on the right are close together and then the middle one is what you want to get your eyes on first, and that's Zeta Ophiuchi. And if you go north from Zeta Ophiuchi, almost exactly 10 degrees, you'll come to a six magnitude star, 30 Ophiuchi. And if you can get that in your finder scope, M10 should be visible in the finder scope next to 30 Ophiuchi, and then you should be able to find it with your telescope. M10, beautiful globular cluster in Ophiuchus. There's Scorpius, and the red star in the middle is Antares, and Scorpius is about to set, but if you go up from Antares, here are the bottom four stars of Ophiuchus. And the two on the right are Yed Prosterior and Yed Prior. And the one in the middle is Zeta Ophiuchi. And you just go up 10 degrees to 30 Ophiuchi. It won't show up on this screen, but it's about in the middle of the screen. And that's where you'll find M10. Also M12. M12, you do the same thing. You find Antares and Scorpius. And this time, you go up to Zeta Ophiuchi. And from Zeta Ophiuchi, 
you go up almost exactly straight up 10 degrees north to M12, which is about approximately 3 degrees north west of M10. Okay, I got it in my scope. I started with the 24 millimeter eyepiece that gave 50 time magnification and it looked pretty good, but now I've put in an eight millimeter. That gives me 150 time magnification and it looks really good. Since we're already in Ophiuchus, for our next stop, we'll just stay there and we'll look at another globular cluster, M12. M12 was also discovered by Charles Messier in 1764. It's 23,000 light years away. It has 70,000 stars. It has an apparent magnitude of 6.7, and it's thought to be about 12.6 billion years old. It's 14.5 arc minutes across, and to find it, if you're on M10, just go three degrees northwest, and you should be able to see it. Um, it'll be fainter than M10, but uh, if you can't see it in your finder scope, get M10 at the edge, and just edge southwestward to M12, globular cluster in Ophiuchus. Now we're going to look at something that's pretty high overhead in Cygnus the Swan. We're going to look at a beautiful double star, Albireo. It's also known as Beta Cygni, and the brighter star is magnitude 3.21, and it's yellow or gold, and the companion is blue, and it's magnitude 5.8. And they're separated by 35 arc seconds, so Whatever size your Dobsonia is, you'll be able to split this beautiful double star in Cygnus the Swan, Albireo. It's very easy to find. Just find the Northern Cross, Cygnus, and Deneb is the brightest star of Cygnus. And if you make a line from Deneb through the center of the cross, Seder, and keep going, you'll see uh, what together is a magnitude three star, and that's Albireo. To your naked eye, it'll just appear as a single star, but once you get it in your telescope, you'll see the beautiful colors and you'll be able to split Albireo. Now we're gonna go to a really cool deep sky object, M27 in Volpecula, the fox. Volpecula is a dim constellation that you probably won't be able to see, but to find M27, it's pretty easy. It's in between Albireo, the double star we were looking at in Cygnus the Swan, and Altair, the brightest star in Aquila. To find M27, start at Albireo and go eight degrees southwest, and you'll see the patch in your finder scope, and that's M27, also known as the Dumbbell Nebula. It was discovered by Charles Messier in 1764. It was the first planetary nebula ever discovered. A planetary nebula has nothing to do with planets. <laughs> it's just an old star that shed its outer layers in a colorful display. It's 1200 light years away and it's magnitude 7.5. So let's have a look at M27, the Dumbbell Nebula. Oh, wow. Now I'm looking at the Dumbbell Nebula, M27. It's so big <laughs> that a 24 millimeter is fine, but you can increase it in magnification, but it will just turn into a bigger blob. <laughs> but very cool object for a Dobsonian, M27, Planetary Nebula in Volpecula. Next, we're gonna look at NGC 6826. Planetary Nebula found in Cygnus the Swan. It's one of my favorite deep sky objects to look at. It's also known as the Blinking Planetary Nebula because if you stare at it, it disappears. It's 2,000 light years away and it's magnitude 8.8. .8. Try to see if you can see the central star. To find it, go to Cygnus the Swan. 
you can start at the brightest star in Cygnus, Deneb, and from there go to Delta Cygni, a magnitude 3 star, and then go north 5 degrees and you should see it. If you're able to see Omicron Cygni to the east of it, there's a string of three faint stars and NGC 6826 is next to the first of that string of three stars, about two-thirds of the way from Omicron Cygni to Iota Cygni. It's high overhead this time of year, so you may have to get down uh, low to locate it through your finder scope or your red dot finder. But you should be able to find it. Wow, very, very cool. I love NGC 6826. I started with 24 millimeters, but I increased to 8 millimeters to try to see if I could see the central star. Can you see it? Does it blink when you look at it at a low magnification? I found it pretty easily, except for the part where I had to get on the ground to look through my red dot binder and finder scope, but it's not too hard to find. Did I mention what a spectacular evening it is for stargazing? Look at the Milky Way and Sagittarius. Beautiful. It's splashed across the sky. Wow. And it's not even cold tonight. Last night it was 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my goodness, look at that, beautiful. Next we're gonna look at M20, the Trifid Nebula, and M21, an open cluster with about 60 stars, just one degree from M20. So it's nice to pair M21 and M20. M21 is 2,100 light years away and its apparent magnitude 6.5. The Trifid Nebula is a star forming area and it's 9,000 light years away and apparent magnitude 6.3. So let's have a look at M20 and M21. To find M20 and M21, go to Caus Borealis, the top of the teapot, asterism, and go five degrees east to the Lagoon Nebula, M8, and then one degree north will be M20, and one degree from M20 is M21. Very cool, very, very cool. It's really cool, very, very cool. For M20, the Trifid Nebula, get it in your telescope at low magnification and see if you can make out the nebulosity. And then try using an O3 filter to enhance the view and also try to see if you can make out the dark lanes in the Trifid Nebula between the nebulosity. That's called Barnard 85, dark nebula. And it's called the Trifid Nebula because it has three lobes. So see if you can make out the lobes and Barnard 85. It's just beautiful. And while we're in Sagittarius, let's look at one of my favorite deep sky objects, M17, the Swan Nebula. M17 is 5,500 light years away and it's magnitude six. And it's one of the largest star forming regions in the Milky Way. It's beautiful and definitely increase your magnification uh, once you locate it and put an O3 filter in there to enhance this beautiful nebula. Find M17 is a little more challenging. Again, you can start at Caus Borealis, the top of the teapot asterism. And from there, you can head to Mu Sagittari and head north and and east, well, oh my God, did you see that meteor? Oh my God, the 
uh, you go from Caus Borealis to Mu Sagittarii and then seven degrees northwest to find M17. Wow, beautiful. That's so neat. I love the Swan Nebula. It really does look like a swan. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Be sure to make a stop at Caus Borealis to look at the globular cluster M28. It's so close to it and you're in the area. Very cool. And increase the magnification because it'll look even better. Also nearby Caus Borealis is the beautiful, gorgeous globular cluster M22. It's just two degrees from Caus Borealis, but I covered M22 in my video about star clusters and globular clusters. So um, check out that video for more information about beautiful globular cluster M22. Next, we're gonna look at what's known as the summer beehive. I see 4665 open cluster in Ophiuchus. It's 1400 light years away. It's 35 million years old and it's magnitude 4.2. And it contains about 30 stars, many of them hot blue stars. And if you're in a dark enough place, you can see it with your naked eye. So here's Russell Haig, the brightest star in Ophiuchus, and then the beta star, Sibori, and there's IC 4665. Beautiful, beautiful open cluster. Very cool. It barely fit in this big telescope. I see 4665 is right next to Sibori. And nearby is the second closest star to Earth, Barnard's star, about four degrees east of Sibori. It's magnitude 9.5, so it's not very bright. And it's a red dwarf, and it's 10 billion years old. Wow, so definitely check out Barnard Star. I think I saw Barnard Star. I mean, it's not much to look at. It's just really cool that you can see the second closest star to Earth. Next, we're going back to Cygnus the Swan to look at the famous Veil Nebula, NGC 6995, NGC 6990, and NGC 6960. The Veil Nebula is a supernova remnant. NGC 6960 is known as the Western Veil, and to find it, you go to Deneb and then go down to Epsilon Cygni and down two and a half degrees to 52 Cygni. The other parts are just two and a half degrees toward Zeta Cygni, and it's just perfect for a Dobsonian. And once you've located the Veil Nebula, definitely put in an O3 filter, and that will enhance the nebulosity. It's just beautiful. So let's have a look at the Veil Nebula. Very, very cool, especially with the O3 filter. Very cool. Check out the Veil Nebula. Can't use my chair anymore because <laughs> Cygnus is so high overhead, but very cool to look at, the Veil Nebula in Cygnus the Swan. And now we have a bonus object, <laughs> lastly, because it is very late and M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, has indeed risen. So let's have a look at M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, it's a spiral galaxy and it's 2.5 million light years away the farthest object you can see with the naked eye from a dark sky site. It's magnitude 3.4 and it contains a trillion stars and it's magnificent. But it's so big, three degrees by one degree, that you should start with a low magnification to look at it in 
To find it, you can either start from Pegasus, the Alpha Star, and there's a string of two stars down from that, and I always look for it that way and go just above the third star, counting Alpha. Or you can start at Shedar in Cassiopeia and go down 15 degrees. You should be able to see it with your naked eye and get it in your telescope. Let's have a look at M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Okay, here's the great square of Pegasus. It barely fits in the screen. And this star is the one you start with. And you go down from there and above that orangey star is the Andromeda Galaxy. Very, very cool. Very cool. <laughs> well, that concludes Cool Things to Look At in Your Dobsonian Telescope Part 1 Summer. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off. <laughs>